Good morning. It's Thursday, the 17th of September. Over these last months, many people have found it hard to fill the hours when they've been shut into their homes or rooms. It's not been an easy time. Now, I always enjoy reading. And just before lockdown, I ordered a number of books and they were delivered by post. I particularly enjoy thrillers and especially what is called Scandi Noir. The Wallander series by Henning Mankell are great and the trilogy from Stieg Larsson are also worth a read. When I worked in school, we had a governor who when interviewing prospective new staff always asked which newspaper they read. In some ways, this was a trick question because it also reveals something about the person's politics. I have to confess that sometimes I would say to candidates, beware the newspaper question. And in the end, I think the county advisor suggested that the question was not advisable. So what a person reads says a lot about the person. At the moment, I seem to be in a phase of non-fiction reading, local history, politics, travel books. I can recommend the history of the Manchester Massacre. No, not about football, but about the killing of innocent textile workers in 1819 in Manchester. Or how about Posh Boys, which is subtitled How English Public Schools Ruin Britain. And more recently, a book by Peter Gagan, the Irish journalist, entitled Democracy for Sale. And if you want to smile, how about Free Country by George Mahood, where George and a friend try to cycle from Land's End to John and Groats with nothing, not even a bike. In fact, they start at Land's End completely naked. And I won't tell you how it finishes. Or how about Why the Dutch are Different by Ben Coates. So there you are. That says a lot about me. Now, I have to confess that I find it hard reading religious books and even the Bible. The latter is an amazing collection of books, but takes a lot of effort to relate to our world. When Richard Atkinson ran the disciple classes, we read through the entire Bible during the course. Daunting, but something you can try at home. The discussions and Richard's enlightening comments were helpful, but the reading was, I have to admit, sometimes a chore. However, I recently reread a book by a Methodist local preacher from the York area, Robert Brunger. It's called The Miracle of Jesus, and it relates the story of Jesus's wandering life from the point of view of a young boy who works in the communities that supported Jesus. It is, of course, a work of fiction, but it's based on considerable research, and it shows a Jesus leading a life on the run from the authorities, living in close communities and moving from safe house to safe house, following the guidance of God. Jesus is challenged by his task and torn by different views. In one passage, he speaks to his followers, after considerable debate and turmoil with himself. And he tells them his mission is to take the good news of God to all people. There are gasps from his audience, as many find this view blasphemous. But Jesus is adamant. It's a fascinating read, and it encourages me to continue to see the Bible passages through the eyes of this revolutionary Jesus. It's a picture of a Jesus who I may ne never fully understand in terms of deep theology, but it provides an exciting example of challenging inequality, care for the outcasts, and one who supports and encourages us to live in harmony with all people. A people whom God values as unique and often quirky individuals. A Jesus who shows us that we're all part of the great and amazing creation and that we all need to work together, support, encourage 
and protect all people. Let's pray. Creator and unifying God, we ask for your patience, as in this world we often fail to show love and concern for all individuals and groups. Continue to help us to understand how sometimes, maybe inadvertently, we create division, unrest and antagonism. As we read and struggle with issues, as Jesus did, help us to receive your peace and your guidance. And some words from a hymn by Andrew Pratt. Best of all is God is with us. God will hold and never fail. Keep that truth when storms are raging. God remains, though faith is frail. Best of all is God is with us. Life goes on and needs are met. God is strongest in our weakness. Love renews, will not forget. Amen. <laughs>